Good morning and welcome back to On That If I Want To. I'm Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits and this is where I try to answer your questions. Today I am wearing the throw over knit up in Magpie Fibers Nest and Spin Cycle Yarns um, Dream State. All right, let's get started. Question number one. Is it possible to adapt the neckline of your weekender sweater to be more of a crew neck? So I actually get this question <clears throat> fairly regularly. Um, the weekender, which is probably my most popular pattern, it does have a boat neck. And some people prefer more of a crew neck, which is actually why I designed the daily sweater. So it's a really similar fit and style to the weekender. It's just it still has like that boxy fit with the slim sleeves but it does have a crew neck i knit mine with stripes you could always omit the stripes um, if you do want a solid sweater but i'm gonna link that pattern below um, unless you are very comfortable basically redesigning the neckline yourself that's what it would take to put in that crew neck it's totally doable especially if you have some knitting how-to books in your library um, but if you don't feel comfortable making that big of a modification, then check out the daily sweater because that might be a perfect solution. All right, next question. I am unfortunately very allergic to different animal fibers. Mohair is something that causes a major allergic reaction, so I am unable to knit with it. I love all the beautiful mohair projects and designs, though, and so I have been trying to substitute with Surrey silk can you give any advice on subbing surrey for mohair are they fairly interchangeable um as far as reps per inch and blocking any thoughts would be great so i think that surrey is a fabulous um sub for mohair they both have a very beautiful halo and they both tend to have a silk core um, so if Surrey doesn't bother you, then 100% try out Surrey. The only thing that I've noticed is that there are some Surreys that are just a heavier weight. I've seen them all the way up to a DK. So make sure that you are subbing for the same weight of the mohair that was called for in the pattern. Mohair tends to be closer to a lace weight. Um, so that's what you'd want to pay attention to. But I have seen, um, really fine Surrey silk combos out there. Um, and blocking would be exactly the same. And I love Surrey. It's delightful. It's one of my favorite fuzzy fibers to use. So definitely can sub that in. And great that you have an option. I'm sorry that mohair irritates you, um, but wonderful that Surrey doesn't seem to be an issue. Question number three, do you ever have designs that seem great in your head, but don't work out on the needles? How do you move past the disappointment? How often do you need to frog something? Do you still record the knitting fails in your design journal? Um, so I loved this question. There are absolutely design fails for me. And I would say generally there's about one pattern a year that I don't end up publishing that just ends up being a bust. And some of that is the way I design. So some knitwear designers, when they're designing something like a sweater, they'll actually write out the whole pattern first to make sure that it grades well into multiple sizes and then they'll follow their own pattern. My brain just doesn't work that way. So I very much have to design on the needles, work out the kinks. I do a lot of trial and error. I definitely do a ton of frogging and then I write the pattern at the end. Um, so that's only happened once to me where the finished product I realized really wouldn't grade well along all sizes. I didn't feel that it would keep the nature of the design across the entire span. I tried to do about 10 sizes. It would lose certain design elements depending on the size. Um, so I just decided, okay, that's just a sweater that I will have that won't get published. Um, and yeah, it can be disappointing for sure, especially because you tend to get super excited about each design you're working on and you want to be able to share it with the world. But I think my way of thinking about my design work is I pretty much go into every design without a whole lot of expectation. I tend to start with 
okay, this is something that I would love to have that I'm super excited about that maybe fills a gap in my wardrobe or I need new mittens or whatever it might be. And if it works out, then that's fabulous and I can share it with the world. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. Um, it's definitely part of the creative process for me. And there are certain projects I rip out more than others. Shawls, when I'm designing a shawl, I tend to rip it out like a dozen times in the beginning because I'm working out the shaping. Um, I'm playing with that yarn weight with the increases I'm using, how I want to space them. Again, I very much am a tactile person who I use my hands and feeling it and looking at it and actually trying it to work out that shaping. So sometimes I have to play with those numbers and so I just have to keep pulling it out till I get it right. Um, and I've definitely heard from other designers that, yeah, just ripping your stuff out is pretty commonplace. <laughs> um, and so I, and I have no qualms about that. Like it doesn't bother me to rip out my knitting, um, because I, I know that every time I do, I'm getting closer to figuring it out. And I love that as knitters, we have that choice to rip out our knitting and to try again. Um, you know, this year I had a shawl that I restarted numerous times, numerous, numerous times, and then got almost done with it and realized I had to ditch it. It just was, I wasn't happy with the final shape and how it would lay. And I was super sad. I used some of my favorite yarn for it, but now I can, it's still, I actually still haven't completely unripped that one. Um, but you know, I'll unrip it and I will find something else to use that yarn for. So it's all part of the process. I definitely record them in my knitting journal because I, that's how I do all of my pattern starts in my journal. So I start by writing the yarn I'm using, how much it all weighs, and the needles I plan to use, any stitch patterns charts I might want to draw in there. Um, and then I write my notes as I go. So they're in there from the get go. And I actually, almost every part pattern <laughs> you'll see like, whatever the working name is and I'll like get it going and then a lot of times I have to rip it out and try again and then it'll say like that working name take two take three um so definitely there's multiple attempts and they all get space in my journal um and I think it's great to document them because then too you don't know sometimes in a year or two you might learn a technique or have just that aha moment of like oh this is how I could get that one to work and you could go revisit it um, but great question. That was a fun one to answer. All right. I thought this was this next question I really like as well. I have seen so many podcasters talk about needing to knit a pattern exactly as written. Do you get upset when folks take your pattern and create something different? Or does it make you happy that they used your pattern as a recipe to create something new? <clears throat> so, um, I think that one of the wonderful things about being a knitter is that we can modify. We can sub in techniques we prefer, um, whether that be your cast on, your bind off, your short row method. Um, you could add stitch mark or stitch markers. You can add stitch markers if you find them helpful. Um, stitch patterns to maybe something that's a little more basic that you wanna zhuzh up, you can play with color. I mean, you can do so much. And at the end of the day, you're knitting for you. You can absolutely do whatever you want to your knitting and I would never be offended by that. Um, so as far as knitting, somebody saying you have to knit the pattern exactly as written, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think when that's important is sometimes we will have knitters come to us and they're having maybe a challenge knitting the pattern but they haven't been doing it as written. Um, for example, didn't get gauge. And so now they're trying to knit a pattern and they don't understand why it's not getting to the dimensions that it should because they didn't get gauge to start with. So there's key elements like that that are very important. If you do switch things, you just have to then realize that you're taking on a whole new adventure and we can't guarantee the outcome. Um, to guarantee the outcome, you do have to knit it exactly as written. Um, but yeah, I, I love when I see people who like turn my pullover into a cardigan or my cardigan into a pullover, um, play with shawls and colors. And I mean, that's the great thing about when we're making our own, whether it be hand knits or sewing our own clothes, 
anything along those lines, like that's the best part is we can make them perfect for us. And I find that to be true from anything from changing a little bit of a, a design detail. Like even for my Rhinebeck sweater, um, which Rhinebeck is next week, but even for that, my sweater Illuminate, I saw somebody take one of the colorwork bands and they added it to the cuffs and to the hem and it's adorable. And I love seeing that. Um, so I think whether it be trading in a technique that you prefer because it brings you more joy or ease while knitting something um, to adding your own little design elements um, to really make it your own. I think that's fabulous. But just remember anything you do change, that is a change that we then just can't, then we can't, we can only help so much um, in regards to if you hit a bump in the road later on. Um, so I wonder if that's what they're talking about, um, knitting a pattern exactly as written. My guess that would be more what they're talking about. Like if you go off roady, whether it be as little as gauge or um, throwing in your own elements, then you don't always know what to expect for your finished product. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. I was rereading it there. Sorry to uh, make sure I got it all. Okay. Question number five. I have three kids under three Woo. and worry about wearing my hand knit since I usually wind up with spit up, peanut butter, etc. on my clothes at the end of the day. How do you recommend spot cleaning your hand knits? Um, so one thing to consider, I consider my hand knits just like any other part of my wardrobe so my hand knits definitely can get messy sometimes um, i definitely understand the oh i lost my word hesitancy for we've put a lot of work into them a lot of times we've put a lot of money into them for our supplies and everything so i understand wanting to kind of cherish them but for me i find that i just kind of have to treat them like all the rest of my clothes it's the same way with sewing sometimes i treat my hands on clothes a little too precious like oh I, i'm gonna save that for a special occasion but i'm like but then they don't get the wear and love they need so um i remembered sorry y'all sometimes the brain and the mouth don't want to communicate and i just had like five thoughts like all at one time wanting their chance so let's try that again so wear those hand knits and if they do get a stain my recommendation is eucalyn has um spot wipes that you can use they're basically little towelettes that are soaked with their wool wash and you can use those to do a little spot cleaning if you did get like a little especially spit up i mean yeah that is that is part of those years for sure um and if you're nursing i mean there can just be all kinds of things but definitely check out those little wipes. I'm going to link to them below. Um, they have saved me on more than one occasion. I, I'm not always the tidiest of people. And, um, even from like my baking days, like I would just get covered in flour, chocolate or whatnot. And so those can be a saving grace for that. Um, and then I think that and this may not be for now when you already have your hands full with three under three. But also I found something that helps me wear my hand knits um, is getting into a good laundry practice with my hand knits. So I basically just always keep any hand knits to be washed like right in my laundry room. And a lot of times if I'm blocking something like a new design, I'll throw in my hand knits that need to be washed and just do like one big tub, lay them all out to dry. But I've just found that since I've gotten a routine, um, that kind of helps push me to wear those knits as well. Just, yeah, that ends up being easier anyways um wipes they help okay bonus question when constructing a cardigan sweater in your experience is it better to block the individual pieces first and then sew it all together or would it be better to first sew all the individual pieces first and then block the project so i think i actually maybe mentioned this in the last one but definitely block and then seam like that's my rule of thumb across the board. If I am ever seeming anything, I block first. 
first of all, it's just easier. Everything lays flatter once you've blocked it. Um, so you're not gonna be battling with those pieces quite as much. Um, they're not gonna be curling up on you. And also you're probably gonna do a tidier job because you can block to those finished measurements and then seam together. Um, so yeah, I generally knit a lot of seamless sweaters, but if you are constructing one of those with seams, block and then seam. All right, so today, I, I'm kind of blocking it. My studio is an absolute mess. I am getting ready for Ryan back next week. I cannot wait. I hope any of you that are going that I get to see you there. We're going to do our meetup on the hill at one o'clock at um, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And so if you're coming, come come say hi. We're going to take a bigger picture. If you're not coming, totally understandable. We are going to be doing... Um, we're going to go live on Instagram as well, though, so you don't have to miss out. We'll replay it later if you're not around at that time. And um, also anybody who did participate in our knit along and knit the Illuminate sweater, um, we are going to do a little slideshow with some of your photos. So we're going to ask that you send those to us. So there will be more information coming along for that. But as I've been preparing for my trip, my studio is in pure chaos because I'm like, oh, I have to get all my designs organized and all my work done uh, for traveling. So I'm just avoiding... <laughs> the chaos that's behind me. So this week, I'm just going to show how to wear the shift cowl. So the shift cowl is super duper fun to knit. Every single one, even if you use the same yarns, will be different. It's great for your hand spun. I used spin cycle yarns dyed in the wool. Um, and it's just a very, very fun knit. And the reason I designed it is because I do get so many questions on how to wear shawls and some people just find them a little finicky or the ends of them blow off their shoulders. So that is why we have the shift cowl. So you just pop it right over your head and that's it. And it wears like a triangle shawl and it's super cute and cozy. And easy to wear. Um, also, I wanted to say thank you so much for all of your well wishes on my last post. I am doing better. Uh, my health's been a little shaky the past couple months, but onward and upward. And yeah, I am putting below again, if you are going to be in upstate New York for the festival next week, Thursday, I will be at the Wool and Folk Festival. There will be food trucks and live music. Um, so I'll be there to do a little event um, around three. And then at actual Rhinebeck New York Sheep and Wool, Saturday and Sunday. So I hope to see you there. And yeah, have a great weekend. We have some lovely fall weather we're going to enjoy. I hope you do too, if you are in the Northern Hemisphere. And I'll see y'all next week. Thank you as always for sending in your questions. If you have a question you want me to answer, you can find the link at the very bottom of the show notes below. And I think that's it. Yep. Links below. Subscribe if you want to. Hit the bell if you want some notifications. All that jazz. And I will see you next week. Bye, everybody. Happy knitting.